Welcome to this week's OK at Work with myself, Sarah Sawyer, my colleague, Russell Berger from the employment group at Offit Carmen. So this week, we're going to talk about management, uh, both managing your employees and managing your managers. So, uh, you know, we've talked on this program a couple of times about the importance of policies, training, um, those kinds of things. And we just want to kind of elaborate that a little bit more on that a little bit more as far as just really managing both your your high performing employees and your poor performing employees, and then also giving your managers the tools to really, you know, make sure that policies are being followed and, um, you know, it, all the administrative process is being followed. So, you know, a lot of times when we dig into a case and an employer calls us with an issue, the first thing that we're always asking for is documentation. I know we talk about documentation a lot on this program. Um, and I, you know, in, in coaching clients or advising clients on what type of documentation to keep and, you know, best practices and things like that, I also get a lot of feedback from clients on, well, I don't want my client, my employees to always feel like I'm just like, you know, disciplining them or, um, you know, keeping these records on them. Um, and really, you know, that kind of leads me to what we want to talk about today, which is it's the documentation, but it's also, um, you know, using it as a, a tool to also encourage um, employees and potential you know, usually handle that with with uh, your clients, Russell. Yeah, well, I, I, as you said, I think it's really important that you actively manage because uh, that's how you get the best out of people. And um, and, and, and also, I, I think, as you said, it's, it's a way to mitigate your risk uh, because it does come up in the litigation context, particularly around termination. So, you know, to, to state it at a high level anyway, with employees that are struggling to perform, that are making mistakes, that are creating issues, um, you need to address them. You need to be direct. Uh, you know, you need to identify what the problem is. You need to come up with a solution and explain that to the to the client. And you need to, uh, not the client, that's us. Uh, you need to explain that to the employee. And, uh, you know, you need to call for a commitment from that employee. So, you know, you kind of need to spell it all out. It's, you know, identify to agree to be on board. Um, you know, that's kind of the active management that we'd recommend um, when there's a, a, an employee underperforming, whatever the reason is. And of course, as you mentioned, that should be well documented. That should be spelled out, um, you know, to the extent possible. I like to always propose clear objectives um, and if they can be measurable, that's even better. Um, because you want to make it clear like what your standards are and what you expect from an employee. And the easier it is to understand, the easier it is for an employee to get on board with, with those expectations. And, and if they don't, um, you know, you've made it clear for them and you've made it easy to, to take the next steps. You said, hey, you know, I expected you to, you to do X, Y, and Z over the next 60 days and you failed to do it. You know, I don't have a choice, but I got to move on. I got to find someone else who can do that. That puts you in a lot safer position than if, say, ah, you know, this person just wasn't doing a good job. They were underperforming. I can't really put my finger on why. Uh, and now I want to get rid of them. I mean, it's a lot easier to defend the former against uh, some kind of claim for wrongful termination than the latter. Yeah, and I think to to the point um, about around training employees, it's also the rank and file employees. You want to make sure that the expectations are clear. But then also your managers are kind of your front line to implementing these kinds of policies and procedures. So often, you know, the CEO of the company is not the one that has their hands in the day-to-day -day discipline and expectations and communications. So part of it is also giving your managers the tools. So often I'll, you know, develop a handbook for a client and that's really the first step. And then it's also then making sure that both the employees who, you know, the rank and file employees understand what the policies are, but also the managers understand what the expectations are, what their duties are, um, and training around that as well. Because it's really, that's how you make sure that you've got a good system in place and that the policies are actually going to make a difference. You know, if you have a disciplinary process and your managers don't know how to apply it or what's expected of them, uh, you're going to have inconsistencies, you're going to have more room for error, more room for people being treated dispor disproportionately um, in different departments or, you know, more room for uh, potential, you know, uh, issues down the road and, and liability. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, you know, I kind of see it from our standpoint. We draft the handbook, we draft the policy. We know it's legally compliant when we send it out because 
because we did it and the client can feel good about that and the client puts it in place um but then it's only as good as it as the enforcement of it and the policing of it and the, the implementation of it and you know that doesn't usually fall on the ceo the owner the hr person it falls on the inline managers and so you know it's not that the inline manager needs to be an expert in hr employment issues but they need to know what's in there they need to know you know what they're supposed to do in certain situations and they they need to know kind of what the objectives the overall objectives of the business are and you know how to manage people towards those goals and and not just away from the things that they're not supposed to be doing yeah and the responsibility that they have i mean i had a client recently who had a manager who had something happen um, a, a form of harassment happened to them and they didn't report it up the chain <laughs> and they just kind of dealt with it themselves and so you know, if their managers don't understand that that's an expectation that they need to be setting certain examples and that they need to be, you know, that they have a certain responsibility um, and the impact that they have over the overall system, then that's a real breakdown in the system and can really create a lot of issues. Yeah, I, I mean, that's why it's so important to, um, you know, get everyone on board. I mean, you know, everyone's got to manage that next level down from them uh, consistently with the same kind of messaging. Uh, and with with some clear objectives. So, you know, if there's a, any takeaway that I have from all of this, it's, you know, identify some clear objectives, you know, know what you're managing towards and what you expect out of each department, each person in that department. Um, you know, these, these things should operate cohesively for the good of the business. Uh, and I think they should all be kind of pointing in the same direction and managers should know what that direction that is so they can do their job. Yeah. And to end on a positive note, it's, it's, you know, as part of this too, is is the positive feedback and the managing the the good employees as well. I mean, especially in a remote environment, um, you don't want to lose track of you know people's progress, and the data can be used in both you know in a positive way as well. I mean, we think about it a lot from a protecting yourself standpoint because that's when we deal with these things the most. But within those systems, you know, it's a good way for positive reinforcement as well. And happy employees are a lot less likely to take legal action against you. So. Uh, that's a good piece of the puzzle as well. And, and they're they're a lot more productive, which, you know, we think about it from a legal standpoint, but, you know, the business owners out there, you're hoping you never have to call us. So uh, you want the, the best, most productive employees. And I think that's a good way, um, you know, to ensure, you know, how, I mean, again, make clear how you define that and, you know, encourage people to get there and give them the, you know, the, the term of art is the micro feedback and the feedback loops and, you know, you let people know when they're doing a good job and they're doing the right thing, so they do more of it. Um, you know, I, I think it's it can be more complicated than that, but you know, at start, I think that's kind of the, the place to get going. Yeah. Well, great advice. Well, thanks, Russell, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, that was nice feedback you gave me there. You did a great job today as well. <laughs>